Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are doing something very different. We are going to be sewing a Barbie fashion. So this is using an official Barbie pattern by McCall's. It is a pattern for girls as well as a Barbie fashion. So this fashion is copyrighted 1963 and it is very reminiscent of a foreign exclusive fashion released in 1967 called Sobon. So it is this vest and skirt fashion with a sweater. So I believe they took the idea for Sobon from this pattern here. I also had some scrap fabric left over from the Sew Free fashion I did here on YouTube and um, I wanted to use that. Okay, so here we have our pattern pieces. I also have these non-fray flocked fabric scraps left over from my Sew Free fashion. Okay, so if you're making this at home and you want to use a non-fray fabric but you do not have that available, you can easily take a piece of regular fabric and you take some fabric glue or any other kind of glue that is uh, washable and you apply it to the back and simply just smear it around make sure, making sure that it is evenly coated and then once that is dry it is quite stiff and you can cut it and it will not fray. After giving the instructions a read through, I decided what alterations to make. As my remnants are quite thin, I have to cut the skirt pieces into three sections. Also, as the fabric is non-fray, I can skip hemming and such. So I'm removing all unnecessary parts of the pattern. I'm now finding the perfect placement for the pattern pieces, making sure to leave a little extra for the seam needed when joining the three skirt pieces back together. I am also trying to keep them as close together so as to not waste the fabric. Now that I have all my pieces cut out, the first step is to rejoin the three skirt panels into one piece. But first, I need to decide on what colour thread to use. Unfortunately, I don't have orange, so I decided to go with this orangey brown instead. Sewing time! I usually start by hand rolling the first few stitches to ensure the thread does not get caught or the fabric doesn't get eaten up by the machine. Now I am just checking to make sure that I didn't lose any length once the panels were joined. And we are done! Now we are moving on to the top. First we need to mark the darts. I mark it using a soft lead pencil for lighter fabrics or tailored chalk for darker fabrics. And I usually hand roll the machine for darts and other curves when making doll clothes. I then ironed and clipped the curve as per the instructions. I also sewed the side seam and clipped the curve and then I attached the shoulders. I just need to clean up all this loose thread. I also clipped the skirt pieces at the side extensions. Now I am going to top stitch alongside the joins of the skirt panels. This is my own touch. I think it will look nice plus it will help flatten the seams on the inside creating a smoother silhouette. I am doing this using a 2.5mm universal twin needle and a bobbin as my second spool. As this is partially aesthetic, I am hand rolling most of this to ensure straight lines. Now for the second skirt piece. Now I am going to fold and stitch the first side extension and I am going to attach both sections of the skirt together and now I am going to fold and stitch the second skirt extension. 
and then the final seam below the side extensions. Now I'm going to move on to the blouse. I decided not to go with the blouse pattern provided as I despise sewing inset sleeves. Using some Francie patterns I was familiar with, I whipped up some twirls. So I went with a Francie top pattern and added a centimeter in the front and back. But I will disregard the neck hole on the final product to create the illusion of a turtleneck. I am just using a cheap poplin fabric. To add length, I am not hemming the top and I used the selvage so that the hem would not fray. And I also have some more leftover fabric from the sew free fashion. This fabric I will use for the cuff of the sleeves. As this particular sew free fabric is not non fray, I am folding over the ends to prevent fraying. And the cuffs are done. I also top stitched the cuff and did the same on the other side. Now it's time to attach the back. And I attached the back and I also pressed the seams and pressed the back as well. Now I just need to stitch the sleeves and sides together and top stitch the back. I used a clear vintage Barbie button on the back, leaving enough give to allow for a loop. Now I'm going to create the thread chain loop. First, I'm bringing my thread through from the back and then back down just a few millimeters away. I am just going to roughly gauge how large the loop needs to be. Then just a few threads away, I am bringing the thread back up. I will now start to create the chain by threading the loop and coming back through to create a knot. Then I create another knot, making sure it sits just in front of the previous knot. Growing up means learning so many different things, like reading. I keep doing this until the whole loop is knotted. And voila! I then bring the thread back down and seal it with a double knot. As you can see, I have cleaned up all of the loose threads on the skirt and top and sewed under both sides of the side closure on the top. I also attached snaps to the skirt and top. I didn't think brown thread would look nice, so I tried yellow, but it still didn't look great. So I had the idea of using the remnants of the sticker sheet that also came with the Sew Free fashion. Using a leather hole punch, I cut out circles to cover the exposed yellow thread. I also thought it would be a great idea to add one of these stickers to the button on the blouse to tie it in with the rest of the outfit. If you are making this at home, you could sew on some buttons or glue on some buttons or beads or use any kind of sticker sheet you have available to you. You could even cut out little bits of fabric and glue them on. Now all that is left to do is to clean up the small exposed parts of the seams on the skirt to And there we have it. Let's see how it looks on a doll. I did have to reinforce the um, seam on the t-shirt just because putting it on the doll it was pulling and the seam was coming apart. I think we put the top on next. Now this is a stupid design um, because it opens at the side. You have to slip it on over her head, which actually kind of messes up her hair a bit. So you put it over one arm and over the head. So if you have a doll that has a 
fancy hairdo, you might not want to put this outfit on her because it could mess up the hairdo. So we'll just readjust the top underneath. And before I seal that up at the side, I'm going to put the skirt on. Now, this seems to be made for the later straight leg bodies with the thinner hips. I tried it on a body before 1962 and it doesn't fit over their hips, but I find that if I put it on with the closure at the front rather than at the side, it does tend to go on a bit easier. You do just need to give it a bit of a wiggle here and there. And then we'll twist it around so that the closure is at the side. And then we're just going to tuck the top in underneath. And then we'll do the top button. It seems like the bulk of the shirt makes it a little difficult. But there we go. It's done. And it's been twisted. So we'll have to kind of twist that back around a bit. Bring her arm back down. And then we can do the side up. One, two, three. And both arms down, just the sleeves. And there, you can even see the button at the back there. So I don't quite like that because we did go to the effort of putting the little sticker on and all that. Okay, so that's it from the back and that's it from the front. Now I'm pairing it with some ecru heels. Okay, so I'll give you my final thoughts on this pattern. It is not exactly like Sabon, but it does look reminiscent of Sabon. Um, points of difference, um, Sabon has um, darts here rather than down the front, and it closes in the back rather than this stupid closing in the side, which is probably the main problem I have with this pattern. So you could always change that, you could always do the seam at the side and then add a little bit of extra um, seam allowance here and cut down the back. But um, I didn't think of that. But I do quite like these little buttons at the side here, the stickers, which obviously were my own addition. Even though I didn't panel the skirt by choice, I do actually like how it turned out with the top stitching. It gives it sort of like a 70s look. I didn't need to pay anything extra for the fabric. Obviously I bought the original So Free Fashion a while ago, but I was able to get a second fashion out of it. So if you liked this video, you know what to do. I'm not sure if I'll do more videos like this. I'm definitely going to keep on sewing. I do also have Instagram now, so I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And next week will actually mark my four year anniversary since I posted the Peaches and Cream Barbie review. And so I'll be doing a little bit of a celebratory video for that. I will be showing you some of my previous sewing projects as well as some upcoming projects. I'll be going through some of the dolls that I'll be unboxing over the coming weeks and also show you some new items that I'm interested in. So if you are interested you can watch that video and then the following week I will be back into reviewing dolls. Okay so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time. See ya! Now she wears a dress of gold brocade It delights every heart to see and be part of Barbie's fashion